Hi, this time we'll explain the plan B, the idea of inventing the MOOC 8 but using this additional plan that is not consisting on equations but is trying to convert into VHDL, for example, the full true table or the algorithm that defines the product and the design. So that is going to be possible by means of flowcharts or true table artifacts. In one way or another, you have a different VHDL file, a similar one but different. And so probably you have a different RTL a schematic in the end synthesized, but doesn't matter. What I mean is that you have to proceed as usual. Get an idea, for example, a flowchart and translate the flowchart into VHDL. So this is the MOOCs 8 VHD. Uh, if you have another flowchart, you have another MOOCs 8 VHD naturally. And so every time that you have a different HDL, file you have a different project so this is the idea okay a different project a different folder and everything so a project that can be synthesized so you can examine the rtl after developing the circuit and finally testing it using why not the same test benches all the time because the product and the design is always the mux 8 but i insist on this because it's fundamental in order to clarify the ideas. This flowchart here is for a given... Uh, this flowchart as it is here is a VHDL. If you have another flowchart in mind, a similar one, this is another VHDL. And if you have an a schematic that is from the true table, okay, that's another VHDL. So this is why the option 1, the option 2, and the option 3, and many more options that you like, every option is a different project and has to be placed in different folders. So let it be clear. One file, uh, one schematic translated to BHDL is a project. So let's see what, what is the idea behind the plan B and BHDL. So th this is what we have in mind, a project in the P2 section. And this project is about designing a standard logic circuits. And we have in mind designing a multiplexer, which is, you know, a data selector. And for example, the eight channel multiplexer, the MOOC 8. But this time, instead of uh, getting some kind of equation to place inside the architecture, what we have in mind is to be able to describe the high level uh, idea of the block into the HDL directly in some way or another. So the starting point is as usual, because this is a plan, so First of all, it's always unavoidable to think about what we have in mind. So we have in mind this symbol and this table, right? That is what we have in mind to transfer into a circuit. Uh, so the idea that is all the time in the CSD course is this one. You have to invent something to place inside a block okay so this is the idea you have this entity okay the symbol is nothing but the entity to design and in this way you know what are you going to invent is a mux8.vhd so now you have to have some room here make a space so that you can draw, for example, using these dotted lines in orange color, you know, you can design this uh, block that now is empty, but this block is attached to some ports and input ports and output ports. So whatever that you are going to place here is going to be for generating the true table that you have in mind in the specification section. In plan A, 
What we place here was a set of equations, you know, for example, the ones that one that were based on sum of products. So very well, that was one idea. Place here directly and a structure based on, you know, the number of products or the number of sums that you have. And you get that through the minimization program, for example, and the like. But now this time is going to be different, as I say, and it's going to be a new thing. And here you will see, in some way, the power of BHDL. Because we are not anymore, any longer interested in the equations. Doesn't matter if they are sums of products or maxims or whatever. We are not anymore interested in this logic structure but in the two table itself. So what we want is to transfer the full table in the, in the, you know, the child sheet where we will describe the architecture of the system. So in some way, you know, now instead of this question mark this time, is going to be uh, well, we have prepared that, so it's not something that we will improvise. It is very well prepared. So what goes here, you know, is just a block and some extra circuits, okay? And this block, you know, it's two things, two types of things. One option is, we, we call it in the Dixie's web, option one and option three. Those options are flowcharts, as if you were programming. I don't like this idea now, but, it's, but it looks like that. The idea of transferring the two table into an algorithm which looks like a flowchart, a software flowchart, that's going to be all right. So the block that you're going to place here is going to be a flowchart. So the flowchart is going to generate, I don't know, for example, uh, wire in the end is going to generate a wire for you will go you will like to call it Q and from this wire you will invent the, you know a buffer and then a knot and with this buffer and this knot you will generate the output force from this wire and this wire for example is going to be an internal wire, yes, yeah. so this is what is called the signal in the BHDL layout or structure, a signal, a wire, an internal wire. So here you are, the external wires, you know, the ports, and then the internal wire, the signal. So this block is going to contain a flow chart, right? And how is that possible if we look like to go through the one and the three options? Because the option two is, you know, straight away the full table. Is there a way to copy the table into BHDL? So we have to say yes, there is a way. So we will leave that, that the option two for the next explanation, but it's that simple. It, the schema looks very much the same, okay? You have to place here an artifact that is going to be the two table itself. But now, if you are thinking on a flowchart, how that is possible? How can you think about the two table like this as if it were a flowchart? Well, there is a way, okay? Look at these control signals, enable active law. When one, something happens, and when zero, another thing happens. When one, the chip is disabled all the time, doesn't matter whatever you've got here. And when one, when zero, it works normally as a multiplexer. So you see, you have here a question rhomboid, if you like. You cannot start exactly like this. Why not? You cannot start imagining that you are asking whether EL is one okay that's the way to do it if you are thinking on flow charts el happens to be one that's uh yes or no because if yes if you say yes to this question you know you have something to do 
and this something to do is not a question but an operation. What is what you like to do? Well, if yes, you have something to do, which is y equals 0 and y not equal 1. This is what you have in mind, okay? If yes, and that is forever. So if you start the flow chart like this, asking about this uh, signal that you, you can make it, you see, you can separate this signal which is besides, you see, especially organized like this on the left side of the true table. So you see, it is clearly dividing the table in two subsections, the section disabled and the section uh, multiplexer. So very well, this yes, no, this section disabled and section enabled is what you see here in this question mark. So you see, this operation solve it all what is related to the disabled mode of operation. And what about if you say no? If you say no to this question, it means that now works as a multiplexer. So can you figure out now some kind of flowchart here? What is what you like to decide if the device is going to work down there in the second part of the table, down here? What is what you have to consider now? perhaps the channel selection, because the channels determine what to do. So now, this second half of the table, you know, you see, these 2048 terms, okay, these 2048 terms, you see, 2048 combinations, those ones belong to a multiplexer functioning and mode of operation. So now if you like you can imagine that this channel selection is going to do the job. You see when zero, when one, when two, you see the idea? So why don't you go and ask again? S is zero for example. Is S the channel selection a zero? Well, you may use the decimal value here, there is not a problem to do that. It's not about the code now, it is, is S equal zero? And now here you can say yes or no. If yes, you have something to do now. And what is something to do is what? Well, if zero, you have to choose the channel zero and send it to the output. So you have to assign y to the channel 0, and why not? Well, you can do that here every time in every operation, or instead, if you like, you can use the queue. That depends pretty much on the way that you are organizing this. So if this is the queue, the queue is the output of the flowchart. I'm doing that. The, not completely well, right? So it's going to be that thing. Uh, this is going to be, you see, Q. The output of the algorithm is going to be uh, it's Y, yes, but it is the internal signal, the output of the algorithm. So now is the, this is easier because in this way you only have to think about one thing at a time. So the Q is going to be the channel zero. That's all. Right? So, if no, you can continue asking now if the channel selection is the channel 1. If yes, you may do that assignment again. Q is going to be channel 1, because this is the function of the multiplexer. And if no, you can ask for channel 2 down to the end. So, the last value is going to be asking if S is, uh, you know, a 6. Because if S is 110, if this is the question, you say yes. Now you can assign Q to the channel 6. But you know, there is nothing else to ask here. There is no need to ask for a 7, because the 7 is already the last option possible. So if no, if S is not 6, so 
it is because the Q is the channel 7. That's one way to organize a flow chart. So you see, in the end, every decision has been made. So in the end, you can have a kind of an algorithm like this. You know what I mean? Start asking for the enable or disable, sectioning the table in two parts, and then organizing an algorithm like this. So now, that's, that's all, you see? Now, because what goes next here, uh, the next step is quite, you know, as usual. This means that you will try to find indexes uh, similar DHDL, you know, that's the next step. Find indexes a similar file, the HDL, to copy and adapt. So this is what you've got through this Tipsy's web. You know, examples of almost everything at this level. So it is going to be a good idea to go and find something to copy and adapt, right? So that's the planning. If you are following the idea of a flow chart, okay? And naturally, there are many ways to invent flow charts and to organize these because you can ask different questions or variations of the same question. So this is why you have the flow chart one and the flow chart three to compare. Because, you know, after having solved that, what goes next is only this translation to BHDL, and you only have to think about what is the translation of this question mark. Yes, no, this means that this is a kind of a if, else, you know, that's clear. That is what you are going to do here in some way or another, asking if, else, if, else all the time to the end, all right? So that is basically the translation to the HDL. Now let, let me see if I can explain you in some way how to translate the true table into BHDL as it is, okay? Uh, what is going to be the option two? A kind of an a schematic, if you like, a mixed schematic between signals and the true table artifact. So now what we have in mind is the same idea. The MOOC8 is the block that is going to be translated into BHDL now. And so, uh, inside this BHDL file, we will find here, you see, the truth table artifact. The, the syntaxis in BHDL, that is exactly the two table that we have here on the whiteboard. That's the idea. So, the other things, perhaps it's only a kind of a glue logic, because the true table artifact needs uh, signals. And here you may say that you have the previous one, the Q, okay? The Q is, why not, the same one that you had before. And then, th that's a single wire, but here you may think that you have uh, a vector. How long is this vector? How many wires this vector contain? Well, that can be solved in many different ways. But for, for example, it is a good idea to think in the table subdivided into sections because of the enable, disable, because, you know, it's easy to do that job of disabling the half of the table. In which way? Using a logic gate, okay? If you like, if this is the enable active law, uh, you can very well use this wire directly to drive uh, by means of a knot, okay? You can use that as a wire now, and, and this is an AND, okay? What happens when enable active law is 1? 
if, if this is one, you have here a zero and zero and anything that is generated in the queue is zero. So this is a way that you may have to get the queue and the queue not. Okay, so this is the port. Why not? This is the port Y. And this is the connections that you have here. For example, Q and Z or any other name for another signal, okay? All right, so when one, you have a zero here. So this is another wire, if you like, W, you see? Every wire that you are inventing has to have a proper name in the HDL. Well, that's easy, okay? W is a W is something like this. W is not uh, EL semicolon. That's the way to translate that. So don't worry very much on adding or some wires for convenience. So in this way, using this E, setting aside the EL, you are subdividing the table into sections. So now the table to consider in the artifact is that one belonging to the multiplexer section. So now, how many inputs you've got here? Well, 11, you see? So if you have 11 inputs, because this is the X, uh, well, let, let me, let's name it. This is, it is X in 10 down to zero. So now you can generate the glue logic which is buffers, basically. Buffers that connects to this internal vector, like that. And this is 11 wires wide. So the channel zero, for example, the channel zero that is connected here is a uh, let it be that way. This is the x in 0. This is the x in 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. So this S2 is the x in 10. OK? So that's the connection that you have to go through this. So this is the vector S2 down to 0, as it is as a port. But now here, you have three wires as well, but those three wires happens to be X in uh, 10 down to 9, 8, you see? So S2 down to 0 is going to be assigned to the X 10 down to 8. And channel 0 is, uh, this is the X in 0 and up to the channel 7. The channel 7 is, is, is like uh, the X in 7, all right? So this is what you do. You have the possibility to copy the full table or a section of a table into VHDL. And then you see in the sheet of paper, what you are doing is finalizing the circuit with some extra devices like those uh, uh, interesting, these useful buffers to, to change the names. You, in some way you are changing the names because the artifact, you see, needs, it needs, uh, it needs uh, vectors. And what you've got at the input is not a vector. Well, some of the wires are vectors, but not all. But now, you see, by means of this X in signal, okay, you have a vector. So that's the idea. Vectors to connect the inputs and outputs, some signals and some extra logic, because here, for example, it is easy to see that half of the table can be disabled completely with a single AND. So this AND is for enabling or disabling the table, okay? That's the idea. So now, what is next is simply to see how this file looks like in the HDL and run the synthesis process 
and try to see and watch the RTL view and the final test and, and examine the test results, the, the timing diagram to check whether the circuit works as expected or not. Well, if the schematics has been understood, you know, the next thing is to translate the schematics into BHDL. And in this lesson, you have all the schematics uh, placed in the right location, in planning section. For example, this is the plan A that was discussed in the other video. And down there you have up to three or four versions of the plan B. For example, if you click here, you have a kind of uh, one possibility for a flowchart, the version one. If you click here, you have the schema that belongs to a possibility, you know, a way to connect the true table artifact. In th this time is by using a AND controlled, you know, by the enable active law input, something like that. And then the other version, the 2.2, .2, if you like, it's practically the same thing, but this time integrating, as you see in this picture, the full table, uh, the full, the full in, in, the, in the true table, all the inputs, not only 11 inputs as before, uh, separating the enable, but now you have them all connected as inputs to this x in vector so that you generate the queue just like that without having to use the and so this is just you see a slight variation so every plan now has to have the corresponding bhdl because here you are annotating everything you have buffers and wires and the two table artifact and etc so everything is here so if you've got all the details in this plan, now in this picture, what goes next is the translation to VHDL. And the third version, you know, is another flow chart, the one that was discussed in the presentation just now. So those are the, f the three or four plans and you can organize the corresponding projects in these different folders because you know every schematic every flowchart means a different project if you think about synthesizing uh, so then you have as well the plan c1 if you have interest in in keeping an eye just looking or watching the way it is organized we will retake that one, but not in C1, but in the C2, because this picture is going to be elaborated using more than one VHDL file. So it's going to be a hierarchical architecture composed of several files. So we will attain that in plan C2 in the next P3. So now leave it here. It is okay for you, but it's not recommended as you see here. So after the planning section, go, what goes next, as I say, is the translation of every single plan to VHDL. And for example, the entity may look like this. All the entity definition may be the same for all the four plans in this plan B. And even the plan A doesn't matter. You are inventing the MOOCs 8. So the entity definition is like that. Keep an eye here on the idea that every channel is taken as a single wire. It could be done differently. We could have attached a channel input vector 7 down to 0, but this will have implied the modification of the symbol. So let it be like this, and then let's plan the several BHDL. Here is the one that was explained in the plan A and down there you have the four of them so for your convenience so it's up to you to study them in detail so if you click the flowchart version one is like that okay 
and if you click the version 2 which was the true table it's the same entity naturally but now what you see here practically is a true table description and the like so you have the four files and in this way you even have the version of the plan c1 but now because this is the video on the plan b if you have the four files what goes next is uh, you know the starting of uh, the projects so you you may go to p2 and and this is the idea for every one of the plans b you have to have a different folder so if you go into the plan one for example this is what is necessary you know you have to download into this folder the mux 8 version 1 and if you like you can take the test bench from the previous plan a and even you can even take for the simulation process for organizing the the inputs and outputs in the timing diagram in the functional simulation you can even take the wave 2 you know that one that organizes the waves accordingly uh, the way you have decided so the pattern of the logic diagram in the end is, is similar every time it has to be the same indeed doesn't matter because here the point of this exercise is show you that doesn't matter the architecture structural or behavioral in the end the circuit that you are uh, designing here is the MOOC 8 so that is what you have to give you the same logic diagram as is explained in the P2 project page so you see I did that so you can do it the same you can download to this to this specific folder the corresponding MOOC 8 for example now if you are in the version 2 if you click the MOOC 8 it is exactly like this you see the, it is this schema the one that you are translating now to be HDL so if you open this link into a new link you know a new page this is the schema that you are translating exactly this one okay so you have to find the and and the output buffers and the many input buffers relating the x in vector input to the true table to the different channels and selection like that because this is the assignment that was solved here s2 s1 s0 was just x in 10 x in 9 and x in 8 and and so on so this is the schema okay so this is what you've got down there in the architecture it's the true table right of the MOOCs 8 and look at this you have the q the z and the w signals this is what is on the picture okay this picture has to be updated i don't know if it is updated already or not yeah that one is sometimes this thing happens a new picture on the web do not update automatically and, until you click f5 so you see this is the picture that i'm talking about exactly the one that we are studying if you have a signal w Z, another signal Z and another signal Q internal wires those wires has to be declared in the VHDL file naturally then there is another one a signal X in like that that is a, a standard logic vector of 11 components so that is what you have in the schema naturally this is what you've got at the input so it has to be here so you see the point is all the time the same the VHDL file do not have any sense unless it goes accompanied all the time by the schema the schema that you are inventing remember that you are being here 
acting as an engineer. So what counts here is the schema that you are inventing. The translation to the VHDL at, up to some point when you have some experience will be very easy and has no consequence or has no even a grade because you know it's an automation. Once you have the schema doing that translation, especially uh, fortunately, especially if you have something to copy and adapt, and this is the case, it's going to be something like this, easy. Okay, so this is the way the two table is generated in this version 2, and then there is the output logic. For example, you may say that the Y is the buffer Z and the YL is not Z, exactly as here in the picture. You see Y is Z and YL is not Z, as you see exactly by means of these two gates. So the same with the other gates at the input. The same thing has to be at the input side. You see, for example, x in 10 down to 8 is what is called the vector s. So the three components of the vector s goes to exactly the three components 10, 9 and 8 in the x in vector. And then the other ones are just uh, assigned like this. You see, the channel 0 is... Uh, you know, the x in 0 is connected, is the output of the channel 0 input port, and so on and so forth. So, you see, the first idea here is to get this source file. So, very well, when you've got this source file, you can uh, continue, you know, uh, organizing a Quartus Prime project and keeping an eye to the RTL and the technology view and then go into the simulation section and the simulation as I said before can be uh, just copied from the previous one that you've got in plan A so in the end I'm not going to explain that again you know I've given you the four source files so now it's up to you to go and repeat that think at least one time. Do it at least for the version 1 or for the version 2.2 or whatever you like, okay? Do it at least one or two times to see the mechanics of it. And then continue with the simulation. So let's see if in the end you get something like this. Okay? Exactly the same picture that you had in the plan A. So you see, explaining the plan B is that simple, especially because I'm giving you the schematics that are invented here, the, even four of them for this plan B, and the exact translation of the schematics into VHDL files. Okay, as you see down there in this line. So if you've got the source file, what goes next, you know, is a laboratory exercise. Go to the end and copy the pictures and comment the pictures and get results and organize your files as I did here. You see, this is the way it has to look your project. MOOCs 8 solved using the plan A. That was the other day video. Now you have the MOOCs 8 solved by the using the plan B type 1 and then the plan B type 2 and etc etc. Alright